1990. Your sons, daughters, grandsons, and grandchildren will be applying to the colleges of this state in a number three times what they do today. Our airports will serve five times as many passenger miles. We will need housing for 100 million more people and many times more doctors and engineers and technicians than we are presently producing. That is why we're trying to do more in these areas. As in the 30s, Albert Thomas and Franklin Roosevelt and others did those things which make it possible for not only Texas but the entire United States to prosper and grow as we do in the 1960s. In 1990, the age of space will be entering its second phase. And our hopes in it to preserve the peace, to make sure that in this great new sea, as on Earth, the United States is second to none. Second to none. In our day, certain economic proofs have become accepted as self-evident. As self-evident. Accepted as self-evident. Proofs have become accepted as self-evident. A second bill of rights under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all, regardless of state or race or free. Among these are the right to a useful and remunerative job, the right to earn enough to provide adequate food for his clothing and recreation, the right of every farmer to raise and sell his product at a return which will give him and his family a decent living. The right of every businessman, large and small, to trade in an atmosphere of freedom, freedom from unfair competition and domination by monopolies and over abroad. The right of every family to a decent home, the right to adequate medical care, and the opportunity to achieve and enjoy good health. The right to adequate protection from the economic fears of old age, sickness, accidents, and unemployment. The right to a good education. All of these rights spell security. And after this war is won, we must be prepared to move forward in the implementation of these rights to new goals of human happiness and well-being.